Why are most API companies trying to get into the CDMO business? Why is there no softening of the demand for this type of business? Why are margins in this business are so high? To answer these questions, let us take a look at what exactly CROs and CDMOs do. To understand the business of CROs and CDMOs, we need to take a look at the process through which new drugs are brought to the market. The drug discovery process begins in the laboratory where researchers are trying to identify the cause of diseases and how to treat them. They identify tens of thousands of compounds that they believe could help cure the disease. This could be natural compounds, chemical compounds or even bioengineer compounds. They test these compounds in cell cultures which is called in vetro testing and in animals called in vivo testing. Through this process, they collect a lot of data on how the drug behaves and narrow it down to 3 to 5 compounds to make a drug out of it. This whole process can take up to 5 to 6 years. All of this data is submitted to FDA in an IND which is Investigational New Drug Application. If the IND is approved, the drug now can be tested on humans. This phase of testing is called clinical trials. The clinical trials are conducted in three phases with the number of people being tested increasing with each phase. Before phase 1 trials, researchers have to do a microdosing study. It is conducted on a very small group of people, usually 10 to 15 and it is done to make sure that the drug which has never been tested on humans before is safe to consume and not toxic. Once it is established that the drug isn't harmful to human, researchers can use higher doses in later phases. Phase 1 of clinical trials is carried out on 20 to 100 healthy volunteers. Researchers test to find out what is the highest dose a human can take without any serious side effects. To do this, they carry out three stages of the study. Single ascending dose, multiple ascending dose and food effect. In single ascending dose, a small group of people given a single dose and observed for a period of time. If the data is in, in line with the predictions, the dose is increased next week for new group. Dose escalation continues till maximum tolerated dose, which is MTD, is reached. In multiple ascending dose, every successive group receives multiple increasing doses of the drug. Tests are performed to see how the drug works and moves through the body. This is called pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. This study is performed to test the effect of multiple doses on the body and how the body processes the drug. In food effect studies, researchers try to assess the impact of the food intake in the absorption of the drug. Volunteers are given two identical doses, one after fastening and one after meal. After 70% of the drug in phase 1 move to phase 2. In phase 2, the drug is tested on few hundred volunteers. Phase 2 of the clinical trials is the first time when the drug is tested on the people actually suffering from the disease or condition. Different amounts of drugs are often given during the trial to assess how much the drug is needed to achieve its desired effect. Some phase 2 trials have a group of participants taking a placebo to prove the effectiveness of the drug. This study is also conducted in two phases. In phase 2a, research is done to understand the optimum dose for treatment and in phase 2b, the efficacy of drug at that dosage is tested. About 33% of the drug in phase 2 moves on to phase 3. Phase 3 trials are conducted on a large group of volunteers, typically a few thousand people suffering from a disease. It is the largest trial and is conducted to test the efficacy and adverse reactions on the large set of population. These trials are carried out at multiple test centers and are randomized and double blind. Randomized means that half the patient receive an already existing drug and the other half receives the new drug at random. Double blind means neither the patient nor the researchers knows who received which drug. This is done to eliminate researchers bias. Phase 3 is longest and most costly phase and only 25% of the drug get through it. When a drug gets through phase 3 trials, the drug company files a NDA which is new drug application. The FDA reviews the data and if it satisfies their requirement, 
they approve the drug for sale. But the monitoring of the drug does not end there. The drug has to be monitored after it has been approved for the sale to the public. This is called phase 4 testing or pharmacovigilance. Post-marketing surveillance can provide long-term safety data for a drug after it used in a general population by large group of people who have a wide variety of medical conditions. The main objective of phase 4 trials is to check drugs performance in real life scenarios, to study a long term risk and benefits of using the drug and to discover any rare side effects. If there are any issues with the drug at this stage, the drug is recalled. About 70 to 90 percent drugs manage to stay in the market. Now that drug has been approved, the pharma company has to figure it out how to manufacture the drug. It used to be manufactured in small batches for clinical trials, but now it has to be scaled up to make millions of doses for sale. To be proactive, the pharma company should have set up a manufacturing facility for the drug when it was phase 3 itself. But if the drug does not get approved, then that investment go to waste. To mitigate this risk, pharma companies use CROs and CDMOs. It costs billions of dollars to put some drugs through preclinical and clinical trials. And this cost only keeps on increasing over the years. So innovator companies choose to focus on innovating and let the CROs and CDMOs handle testing and manufacturing of the drug. CROs help innovator companies with right from target identification to preclinical trials and eventually clinical trials. They essentially take the research and regulatory work out of innovators hand so that they can focus their resources on innovation. CDMOs on the other hand come into the picture when IND has been approved and the drug needs to be put through clinical trials. They manage the clinical trials, manufacture the drug in small batches and eventually scale it up if it receives regulatory approval. They have the expertise in commercial production which innovator may not have. So they can produce the drug on large scale more efficiently and economically than innovator company could. So to answer our earlier questions, why are most API companies looking to get into this business? Because it is a very stable business with not much cyclicality in demand. The business is not very dependent on outside factors because the need to bring new medicines to market will never go away. Besides, CDMOs get paid to test the drug. If the drug does not pass the clinical trials, they still get paid. But if the drug gets approval, they get to take the drug into commercial production which is a very high margin business since the drug is under patent. So most API manufacturing companies are currently trying to get a piece of innovative drugs business and be involved in bringing the therapies of the future to the market by being a part of long journey it takes to bring a new drug to the market.